Family friendly WFRN, Josh Wilson. That was then. This is now at 722 on this Friday morning. Hey, good morning. Welcome to the WFRN Morning Show. We are Doug and Cody on a day that's starting out warm. Here's the bad news. Yeah, the temperature's plummeting. We just went from the 60s. We're in the 50s now. We'll soon be in the 40s. By lunchtime, we could be in the 30s. Whoa. Yeah, so it's getting a lot cooler. Here's the good news. That was the bad news. Here's the good news. <laughs> we made it to Friday, and it's WFRN's Day of Prayer and mm-hmm. Hope. And we are in this together as the WFRN family all throughout this region, throughout parts of Indiana and Michigan. And we have a prayer focus every hour. And this hour, we're praying for our grandparents and older parents and all those who are in a high, in a risk category with seniors, yeah. with seniors and, and, and older people. And uh, we're going to be praying for them throughout the hour. Call in... Uh, at the WFRN prayer line in a little while, 888-800-WFRN. We'd love to pray with you and together with many. And when you can't listen throughout the day, you can still go to WFRN.com and look at that mm-hmm. hour's prayer thing. Absolutely. And we'll be on the on the same page before the Lord. But it is time for Triple T, Triple P with Trisha, brought to you by Triple P Parenting of Elkhart County. And uh, prayer but- starts with P, positive parenting starts with P. <laughs> Trisha, how We're you gonna- doing? Good, how are you? Good. Pivot to a Aha. little younger generation. Talk Possibly, about, uh, perhaps. Ooh, nice. <laughs> uh, kids and families with yeah. Trisha. Good morning, Trisha. Good morning. You always bring good advice, Trisha. You always bring good insights. Well, thanks. And how timely today's is. Yeah, so like I think your prayer focus today, focusing on grandparents, is really important. We have put a lot of energy focusing on our kids quite frequently, but we don't want to forget our parents mm. and the grandparents. That's so right. That's very cool. But that's that right. being said, how do we have these coronavirus COVID-19 conversations with our little ones? It's like, tr- it's going to yeah. be tricky. It can be really tricky. Like they're all at home now. Some of us are all at home now and we're all having this very unexpected joyful wonderful time together. <laughs> <laughs> we'll remember the We're, best parts. Yes. Yeah, more than the not so great parts. So we yeah. have the good times, we have the, like the tougher times and I'm hearing this from families all over the place, like, because we weren't prepared. Yeah. I mean, uh, like, I mean, schools aren't prepared for a long-term mid-semester uh, break like this. Mm-hmm. Families aren't prepared to just suddenly mm-hmm. be at home all the time. Mm-hmm. And um, I think and kids aren't prepared to not be in school. They're, they're used yeah. to this. And it's, it's tough for everybody. Yeah. So how us as parents and caregivers, like, how are we having these conversations and have you had these conversations and what are your kids feeling? What are your teenagers feeling? What are you feeling? This is kind of what we wanted to talk about today for Triple P of Elkhart County. Okay. Like our concern is for the families and we are here to serve families. So somebody gave us this great link to a article that was published by the National Association of School Psychologists. And it's really, really great. Six pages long. It was surprisingly an easy read, and I read through it really fast. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> um, to support us as parents and caregivers, like how much should we say to our kids? How should we answer their questions? And what should we emphasize about the virus? And how much should we emphasize things? So how do we have mm. a calm, reassuring conversation with them when we ourselves might not be in a state of calm yeah. or they've heard so much other stuff and they've seen because there's so much out there there is and there's a lot of panic i mean going to the grocery store alone just like a child would notice the difference yes, <laughs> it's very different right we, now we've talked quite a bit here and others have too about the how important it is for those who don't have hope in the lord in this during this time times like this to see that we have a peace from mm-hmm. god and we have a higher hope and uh so how 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 true that is with our own children too Yes. They're going to take cues from us, aren't they? They really, really do. And that change and that calmness really does start with us. Like it starts with Christ, but it starts with us demonstrating that and living that out visually for our children. So this article put out by the National Association of School Psychologists is going to be on Triple P's Elkhart County's Facebook page. Oh, good. So I encourage everybody to check it out on there. It's going to be available in English and in Spanish. Within this article, there are several different links to other resources to help strengthen your family as you work through this new time in life, (laughs) living at home (laughs) with your kids for an extended period of time, going into summer too. Mm. This is going to be a long haul thing. Um, But one of the first tips they give us 
is, of course, to remain calm and be reassuring to our children. Our kids do react to our verbal and nonverbal cues, and we need to be very conscious of this. So how are we responding to the news that we're hearing? Kids are smart. They're super smart. How are we having conversations with adults when our kids can hear? Mm -hmm. What adults, what other adults are saying around our kids? Like we have to be very conscious of that and being conscious of how our kids are feeling. So we want to be careful and intentional about emphasizing truth. It's hard to hide anxiety. It comes out in her voice, comes out in her demeanor, even more than words often. And if you're having a hard time dealing with it, just calmly admit that to your kids. You know what? I'm struggling right now. I don't have answers, but I'm looking for answers. If there are two parents in the home and one is not as anxious about it, maybe they would could be the ones to talk to the kids about it. Yeah. So they see, oh, okay, it's going to be okay. Yeah. I think of a scene from uh, one of the Hobbit movies. <laughs> and the dragon is coming. I forget the names of the villages and the places, but the dragon is coming out over the little village on the lake at the base of his mountain. And the, there's a there's a dad and three kids, and the children are terrified, of course. And one of the children says, Dad, the dragon's going to get us, or something like that. And the dad stays calm, and he grabs like a crossbow off the wall, and he says, not if I get him first. We're going to, mm. we'll, we'll, you'll, we'll be fine. And I'm like, you know what? That guy has no chance against that dragon. <laughs> but what a gift, what a gift to his children. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're like, you know yeah. what? Dad isn't giving in to, fe- to yeah. fear. Yeah. Dad is staying calm and he didn't even have the Lord in that movie. So yeah, we've got the Lord and maybe we can go to the Lord and get calm Mm -hmm. before we go to our kids so they can see that. Right. Lord, fill us up with your peace and hope so that it'll reflect onto our kids. Exactly. And we have to be prepared to have this continued conversation with our children. It's going to be on the news for a while. They're going to feel the effects not going back to school for a while. It's not a one and done. It's going to keep coming up. And the conversation will evolve over time, and that's okay. We want to be available for our children to be able to come and voice their feelings and their concerns and what they're healing, hearing and to help them put that into a healthy perspective, helping them learn how to sort through rumor versus fact. Mm-hmm. So that's a skill we can teach them right now. It's a great skill and a great opportunity as for us as parents to really help them learn how to dive through the muck of rumors and fear and finding accurate sources for information the way that information morphs and gets changed when kids are talking to other kids it's almost as bad as adults on facebook and i mean it's really media. bad <laughs> and our it's kids really are bad. really social media savvy so they're hearing a lot more yeah. i think than yeah. where we realize yep. yep so when we talk to our kids this is where you guys are the experts with your kids you know their body language you know really kind of where their emotions are at to some mm-hmm. level so take those verbal and physical cues from your children on when to have conversations and to pay attention to when you feel they're actually curious to have the conversation Mm -hmm. talk about it so when they're ready to talk be available if at all possible one this article has tons of tips i encourage everybody to read it but i want to hit on three main points when it comes to age appropriateness on how to talk with our children about covid19 so the early elementary age They suggest to have a brief, simple information shared about COVID-19 that balances fact with reassurance. So give the children examples of tasks they could even do to reduce their risk. Mm -hmm. So especially with little ones, germs and viruses, that's an invisible something that adults talk about. So maybe find some cool, fun, interesting ways to make germs a visual and real. Help them figure out what that's going to look like. So... I looked some cool little fun things up on Pinterest last night, like just putting glitter on their hands and then having them shake hands with somebody else in the home oh, and watch gets how everywhere. the glitter spreads. Oh, That's germs. <laughs> interesting. So, yes. Like, there's lots of fun ways to do this. So when you take something that's unknown to little ones and help them learn about it, it really helps them to truly understand, like Very especially cool. the importance of washing your hands. Cool <laughs> idea. I like that. You gotta clean the glitter up, but it's worth it. Right, yeah. <laughs> Upper elementary to middle school, they might be asking more questions without you having to bring it up. So help them again sort through rumor versus fact. This is where you really get to hone those skills of searching through and filtering through what's really true and what's not. And you can discuss risk reduction efforts that you yourselves, your family are doing and what the community is doing. Mm-hmm. And you can have those intelligent conversations with your children you can with little ones too but this is a little more 
you know, mature. And then the middle school, the high school, those again are, again, they've advanced to more adult-like conversations and you can refer them directly to appropriate sites and sources so they don't have to take your word for it, you know, from mom and dad, because a lot of teenagers, mom and dad don't know anything anymore. So a place that's, for it. that's okay. Use that and point them in the right direction of sources that they can go to to find accurate information. And the article has several different links and sites right there that you can click on. It'll take you directly to several different sites. And I love, they've got talking with your children, coping with stress during the infectious disease outbreaks, centers for disease control, that's there, hand washing, sanitizer use at home. Like there's lots of links on there. And so as we help our children gain knowledge about unknown situations such as coronavirus, like this is very new, when we can give our children an education on something that causes fear and anxiety, it can give them a sense of calm and a sense of control even when they have no Mm. control in this. Mm. So we can just reduce a lot of anxiety and stress on their Mm. part as much as possible. Mm. Well, Tricia, thank you so much. That's Triple Mm -hmm. P with Tricia, uh, brought to you by our friends over at Triple P Elkhart County. You can find them at triple p elkhart county dot org and uh trisha all of your events upcoming are, are currently postponed until further dates that is true okay thank you so i encourage everybody to check out our facebook page if you're wanting parenting assistance in any way shape or form at this time we are doing what we can to serve the community virtually so gotcha. we're all learning this really fast This stuff's coming. We're going to be putting a lot of stuff on Facebook, a lot of tips, tricks, hopefully some indoor crafts, how to use things that we already have in the home so nobody's having to get out of the Mm -hmm. house. And then we're going to make ourselves available to do virtual visits since we can no longer go in the home. Okay, great. We so appreciate what you do at Triple P of Elkhart County. Trisha Lightfoot, let's real quick just ask the Lord, Father God, we just thank you for Triple P. We thank you for Trisha and Emily and the whole team at Triple P of Elkhart County, their hearts for families and the community and the resource they are to the entire region through WFRN and other means and online. Uh, Lord, we just thank you for that. And while our focus this hour is we're lifting up uh, older people, seniors, our grandparents, and, and, and in many cases, parents, Lord, we also want to specifically pray for the ones closest to those folks' hearts, in, which is grandchildren and children. Lord, we just ask, help us to communicate well to our children. Help uh, them to see the peace and the trust that we have in you. And thank you that children are not uh, at ultimately at risk, that, that our, uh, our survivors, that, we're, that it seems to be um, not having any full effect on children. We praise you for that. We thank you for that. And yet we know that their worlds are small. So help us speak in with a calm, reassuring voice. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thanks, Tricia. Thank you.